All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Thursday, August 18th, 2022. If you're not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Also, don't forget the Cycles course is this Sunday, August 21st at 12 p.m. So make sure to sign up for that. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, not really much to talk about again. Uh, so spiders up here 40 basis points right now triple q's up half a percent and we're uptaking here as we approach the 330 time frame it's about uh, 318 p.m and market's kind of just in float mode they've really been in float mode all day long we had some backing and filling here this morning uh, kind of just a continuation of the little fade that we had post fed minutes yesterday and you know markets chopped around and now just getting a very light volume float here and this is why i keep saying you, know, you got to respect the light volume. Take a look at this. So it's almost 3.30 and we've traded not even 32 million, 32 million shares yet on the spiders. Um, this is the type of action we've come to expect here during the month of August. And honestly, I expect tomorrow to be even worse. So, you know, Friday is, you know, notorious generally for being a light volume kind of um, kind of complacent day anyway. And then you add in the fact that we have this this August volume, late summer volume, and uh, kind of vacation mode. I mean, this is thir like 30 million. This is the lightest trading day of the year so far, I believe. Um, if we were to close, I mean, we're, we're definitely on pace. I mean, we could get a surge in the last 10 minutes. So there's always that, that possibility. But I don't believe, yeah, this is definitely by far the lightest volume day so far. So it's, it's almost like holiday volume, like Thanksgiving, Christmas type stuff. So... And we don't want to make too much out of this right now. We're just kind of backing and filling here uh, from this up move. And I'm still kind of favoring a move up pro possibly above that 200 moving average. I think that's where, you know, the market really starts to stall out and we get some major selling. We do have Jackson Hole next week, so don't forget about that. Market's probably not going to do much until then. So, again, we have OPEX tomorrow. There's always a chance, you know, we could get a little bit of a surge. A lot of the time during OPEX, you get like the last 10, 15 minutes, you get a, a big volume surge, like 10 million shares on the spider. So that could always kind of make the volume look a little bit heavier um, as they're trying to push the market where they need to be to get it to a certain strike, pr uh, strike price. But again, I don't expect up until then to be any sort of volume. And um, you know, possibly early next week, we'll see some more light volume as well um, until we get to that Jackson Hole thing. I think a lot of institutional traders will probably come back this weekend and into next week before Jackson Hole. They're going to want to be in the office for that um, for obvious reasons. So we'll see what happens. Um, Spider's just hanging in there. And this is the part of being a trader where you have to kind of, you know, you, you got to learn to sit on your hands. It's tough. Like I haven't taken any really new trades. I've taken probably three, maybe four day trades all month. Um, and that's just basically because there's not enough volatility to really, you know, you don't want to force anything, right? That's the worst thing you can do. So, um, but this is the part where it really tests your patience and, uh, you know, you get through this, then you get the volatile periods like this and it kind of evens out, but we will get some volatility coming back here, but we just got to be patient. And, um, you know, if you, if you can take some time off, do it because, um, September is going to be a lot different. So just take advantage of it now. Take advantage of the summer if you can get out there. Anyways, triple Q's here. So up half a percent here. Um, again, not much to say. Very, very light volume. Um, still got some resistance at this pivot here. They may want to go up and test that 200 moving average there on the daily. Um, but overall, it's hanging in there. It's going to do what the spiders are doing. Um, Apple finally had a red day. Um, well, it's actually flat now. Let's see if they could, they could float this thing back up in the, in the next half hour because... You know it's apple and you know god forbid apple has a single red day here um at any given point but yeah, there it's turning green now um but yeah i mean very 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 overbought here i normally i would say if if it looks like this going into opex that it's going to be down very sharply i thought it would be down sharply today um and tomorrow but because i think that just because the volume is so light it's almost like opex is going to be kind of a non-event this week usually that's not the case but um you know Hey, what can you say? Apple's holding up. Um, but I do expect this to correct very sharply. We talked about that uh, 165 area, that gap, and then 158 there. Those are kind of your uh, my short-term targets here on the downside. And then eventually, I think you go back and retest 150, uh, which is a pretty major pivot. It also coincides with that 50% FIB uh, that we talked about yesterday as well. So those are some pretty big levels there on Apple. But I mean, this is just way overbought. And by the way, you know, some people are saying like, oh, Apple's going up. 
uh, because we're in a new bull market. It's gonna it's going back to three trillion dollar market cap. Not my argument to that is um, Apple's a safety play, you know. So I don't really think it's it's anything like that. And we talked about the Fang stocks yesterday. You know, where, where's the rally in all the other Fang stocks? Where's the rally in Arc? You know, why has Arc uh, been taking a hit so hard today and really? barely off the lows. So you can make a case here that um, it, a lot of this is, well, first of all, OPEX related, but um, the strength in Apple is really, you know, Apple's basically a safety stock. It's a Dow stock at this point. It's not a growth stock like it used to be. It's not a, it's not an ARC type stock. So um, anyways, I digress a little bit here. Um, and, and again, you know, people are asking now, questioning like, is this a, is this a new bull market or a bear market rally? Because I've been expecting this type of a rally since late May. Um, and we were looking for that in June. We talked about the summer solstice. We got that pivot right there. Um, we also got the pivot down here and we were buying with both hands at this area. Now, granted, it's gone a little bit higher than I thought it was. And typically bear market rallies go a little bit higher than you think because that's what short squeezes do. But I have, you know, my opinion has not changed at all. I do think we can get a little bit more of a push here but I do expect a lot of selling to come in here afterward. Anyways, let's move on here. So we talked about the queues, uh, semiconductors. You know, this is actually holding up really well here. Um, so up 1.8% on the day, nice little reversal candle. You do have higher lows, so the semis can push up here. And again, semis are a good leading indicator. If they're holding up, the market likely will hold up as well. So again, I wouldn't rule out another little push there for the SMH. Uh, IGV is also green as well, but you know, nothing really more than kind of just uh, some daily chart consolidation, which is, no, you know, again, no problem. So, you know, this does more backing and filling. This can get a little push here, um, but I do expect it to be kind of limited uh, overall. Um, XBI, biotech, again, kind of pulling back here. So this remains to be a little bit weak, but this has had a nice run off the lows. So um, definitely not expected or not unexpected to see this pull back a little bit, but getting a little bit of a bid off that 20 moving average. And you can see it also kind of coincides with this big uh, wide range green bar. So a good amount of daily chart support there. So XBI, you know, red today, but it is holding up. All things considered, no real problems. Dow Transports, again, just kind of backing and filling here on the daily. Um, nothing really to add to that. It did have a pretty good distribution candle yesterday though. So um, definitely respect that for the time being. So interest rates here. So a um, little, little interesting here on the 10 year. So this actually finished red. But, you know, it came way off the lows, and we can actually see on the intraday here with the 10-year. You know, so we gapped down, we went lower, and then we started to kind of front run, um, you know, Bullard and the, these Fed presidents started talking, and really they recovered pretty nicely off the lows. Um, the two-year uh, two year treasury was green, so it did uptick a little bit, so the yield curve... You know, got a little bit of a, a normalization today, but I mean, it's still like 36 or 37 bips um, inverted. So it's not like a huge win by any means. And if you take a look here on the TLT daily time frame here, um, this is kind of bear flagging here. So this could get a move lower in the coming days. You've got a nice little daily, daily chart inside bar there, kind of going sideways into OPEX. This will be an interesting little chart setup going into Jackson Hole next week. The bond market and the stock market are kind of conflicting each other right now. And usually the bond market is the smarter one of the two. In fact, it always is. Um, so that's the one I'm going with here. But for right now, bond market is calling the stock market's bluff and we'll see what we get next week with that Jackson Hole meeting. But um, yields basically flattish to lower today. So we won't make too much out of it. Again, lots of back in filling going on here. Uh, XHB again, you know, pullback day yesterday. It's just kind of another inside day today. Let's not make too much out of that either. ITB, you know, the same kind of thing here. There we go. ITB, you know, just a small little inside day. No real problems. VNQ, uh, real estate here, a little bit weaker on the weaker side. Nothing crazy though. I mean, I do think we talked about this yesterday, how it does have some pretty sizable gaps here um, on the daily chart that can get filled pretty easily. Um, but you know, all things considered right now, it's holding up okay. Let's not make too much out of it. Uh, XLF, you know, again, another inside day. It's across the board guys. So it, XBD here, um, you know, what can you say? Equities are holding up right now. Um, Albeit pretty overbought here. Um, crude, so crude got a little bit of a bid um, after Bullard made some comments. Um, he said he favored a 75 basis point hike. Uh, I believe he said something about 
uh, quarter two or second half growth being higher. So, you know, crude got a bit off that. I think it was just an excuse for it to rally. Still expecting another little push down here. Um, but overall, everything's on schedule right now. It's OPEX week. It's kind of just hanging in there at the moment. I do, um, I am looking for one more little dip here in crude. I do not think it's bottomed yet. It's very close though. So um, stay tuned for that. XLE getting above this little range here. So nice move on XLE. I, got to, I have to admit, this has gone a little bit higher than I thought it would. I thought we'd have more of a dip here. And that still could happen, especially if the rest, of, if we get a broad sell off, well, you know, everything will go down. But um, XLE is showing some relative strength here. Uh, XOP as well. Nice little pop there on the XOP that may be headed up for gap fill there. And then we've been talking about OIH a lot recently. Um, but we'll take a look here. So that is cracking above that inverse head and shoulder neckline. Tomorrow's close is everything though. So if we can't reclaim that neckline or if we close below that neckline tomorrow, the pattern's invalidated. And then I would say OIH is probably going to head lower. So um, we'll be, you know, keeping an eye on that as well. But um, yeah, it is cracking back above that after being pretty soft Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So OIH kind of coming back a little bit today. Um, and we'll continue to watch that tomorrow. Nat gas had a really good surge today. Didn't take out yesterday's high, but it did surge. And then it came well off the highs here. You take a look here, big pop there in the morning and then really sold off sharply and then kind of just stabilized basically right where it opened uh, for the Globex open yesterday. So nothing really too new to add to that there. I wouldn't do anything with Nat gas right now. And dollar index, the big star today. So nice pop here. Um, and I told you guys, you know, I've been saying this whole time. I was like, you know, it's a nice little sell off here on the dollar, but I'd feel better about there being a top in it if we had gotten to 110. And we haven't. And now we're getting a nice bid here. And we talked about this weekly trend line, how this was still in play because you closed back above it. We pierced it last week, but never closed back up, uh, never closed below it on the weekly basis. And dollar getting a really nice bid this week up 80 basis points today. So we'll see if that comes off the highs a little bit tomorrow. Maybe it has to put in a little pause candle. Um, you are going into a little sell bar, a couple sell bars there. So maybe a little inside day tomorrow. We'll see what we get. But dollar index holding up really nicely. Um, then gold also, you know, all things considered for it to be just down, you know, three bucks here is pretty good. A um, little doji there, you know, considering the dollar index strength, right? So gold holding up okay um gold could become a fear trade pretty soon we'll be definitely be on watch for that maybe we get a pull back to that monthly trend line there around 70 uh 1750 just to show you guys that one more time so that's going back to basically 2014 2015 and um we kind of tested that a couple of times we pierced it last month so we'll see if we back test it again after getting back above that would be an interesting area for a pullback there on gold futures uh, silver, a little bit on the weaker side. It did make a daily chart lower low, so a little bit weaker here. So that probably will come down and test 18 again. And then if you get through that, it's, or excuse me, not 18, uh, 19. And then if you get through that, it's uh, 1875 or so. Um, but silver, a little bit on the weaker side here today. Take so a look at SIL. Yesterday got a pretty good sell off, as, as did SILJ. Uh, but it's holding up for now today. So no major issues we did get a fake print on gdx today down to 2505 so we'll see if they push that down there tomorrow for opex but um you know all things considered gold's actually holding up okay considering the dollar index strength and then platinum also pulling back here to that 50 moving average so i still think platinum can be bought on dips uh palladium here Basically just kind of an inside day, nothing burger there. And copper getting a nice pullback to the 20 and a nice little bit off that. I would like to see a little bit more daily chart backing and filling, but copper's holding up okay here. Uh, nice little move there for copper in the near term and it's holding up. All right, let's flip over here to Bitcoin. So there's your yield curve. So Bitcoin basically flat. It was red uh, earlier today and it's rallied back to the flat line. I think it wants to go down here and test this lower trend line. So we'll see if we can get uh, some type of a reaction off of that uh, here in the coming days. Again, you know, all this stuff is kind of lining up with Jackson Hole, right? You know, we got this big, we talked about the weekly, this, this being a weekly bear flag here. It'd be interesting if this starts to break down next week based on something the Fed says. Um, we have those those key levels on the spiders we talked about coming into next week. Um, Ether is holding up a lot better. That's obviously been noted. We've been noting that every single day. Um, but overall, no real, no real trade right now on crypto unless you want to try and take a stab at that lower trend line there, 50 moving average there on Bitcoin. Maybe you can get a little bit of an uptick on it. But honestly, we've been talking about this every day as well, how weak it is in relative strength to 
you know, the NASDAQ or the S&P, which has rallied substantially off the lows, and this has really not done that. So um, just kind of a weak sector, and I don't really favor doing anything with crypto currently at the moment. Anyways, let's get back over to the spiders here. So yeah, we're basically just hanging in there, starting to uptick a little bit towards the end of the day. Again, let's not make too much out of it. The market's just in float mode. We'll probably see more of the same tomorrow. Maybe we can get above 430 tomorrow on really, really light volume. Um, I don't see any puts. Like if you take a look on the chain, like pretty much all the puts have already been burned. You know, look at all these, look at all this open interest here that's been absolutely destroyed over the last, you know, couple of weeks. But there's really nothing above here. And on the call side, there's quite a bit still. So maybe they just chop us sideways. Who really knows? I wouldn't make too much out of it, regardless of what we do tomorrow. So I think the real move is coming next week. But again, if anything changes, I will, of course, let you guys know. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.